This is uh, Unpacking K-5 Math for Caregivers, and today we are going to talk about what is subtizing and how does it help kids. So Valerie, please get us started. Oh great, I love talking about subitizing. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And we are going to go through some subitizing slides and get a feel for what it is. Um, so basically, supertizing is this idea that we can um, process and understand the value of a set without counting. So of course, counting is very, very important, but it's also important for kids to understand that I can process numbers in groups other than one. So I can think about things in a, in a unit other than one. So, for, so for, for instance, if I go like this, and you can see that really quickly. Uh, humans can see uh, sets up to five without counting. And so when we're working with young students, we try to build them up to that. Um, but even as adults, we still need to be organized in order to see sets and process the value of a set greater than five. So let me show you just briefly um, what we mean. How, 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 how much was that? No idea. I told you I was going to ask you some hard ones. I can estimate. It is about a lot, 15. right? You could say it's about 15. Third, uh, I was going to say 13. About 13. About 15. So the problem is that over five, it's too much. And this is why the numeration system is so powerful, is that it allows us to sort of clump things so that our brain isn't overwhelmed. Um, so subitizing, Doug Clements wrote about, and it's, it's really important uh, for early math skills. So let's try a couple. Well, first I wanna point out that kids can count. We, learn, we teach kids to count, but it's actually really different to understand seven as a series of ones than it is to understand <laughs> seven as uh, a two subitized units, three and four. So when I see seven like that, I I'm, I'm tend to see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's really different than seeing three and four. And one of the things that's important to notice is that how, um, again, that kids need to understand counting's not bad, we wanna count, but that there are two ways to access cardinality. Counting, and by cardinality, we mean the value of a set or subitizing. So when we look at subitizing, we look at the example of three and four or a set of seven, do you see that it better mimics three and four? So it, it better supports students as they're doing their early addition work because that three and that four is really what um, is underneath those symbols three and four. So we have an article, Jenny Ainsley uh, from Orange County and I, um, and I'm just gonna walk you through a couple of these levels. So perceptual one, we do with very little kids, start everybody with the very lowest and build up. What's that? Two. One. One. Nice. <laughs> Three. <laughs> good. Three. Three. Very good. So once you get really good at one, two, and three, then we move on to include four and five in our set. Four. four. Three. Three. Two. Two. One. One. Five. Five. Yeah, five's hard. Five's hard, but you all could do it. It was a very standardized uh, set for five, the, this, this five we see on uh, a die. And then we keep going and we move into conceptual subitizing. So in the beginning, we just had one little pile. And now we're going to start to get kids to see that I can take two little piles and put them together. So it's the beginning of really processing this idea of adding. Four. Two and two. Four. That's right. You saw two and two and you put it together and you knew it was four. Three. Yeah. Five. Five. Nice. Four. Four. Beautiful. And then you keep going and you build and it gets harder and harder. Um, what's that? Three. Three. Six. Six. Eight. Eight. Nice. That's a hard Nine. one. Nine. Nine, six, and three. Now, what about that one? Blurry. It's too, yeah, well, it's blurry. <laughs> but you should, see, if it were a smaller set of dots, you would be able to tell even when it was blurry. That's also nine, but notice that that presentation forces you to have to count. Mm -hmm. So it's important to, to show kids that how we are organized 
helps or doesn't help our brain. Um, and so getting organized with our groups and our sets is really important. Thanks, okay. Nick. Keep going, right? So that was conceptual subitizing. And then I'm going to skip some levels and we'll get up. And where we're really going with this is getting kids to start to see 10 and more. So how much was that? 12. 12. Yeah, because you saw, a, you didn't have to, that 10, you just knew was a set of 10 and then two more. So this, again, mimics our numeration system, one 10 and two more. And the subitizing- but Valerie, um, yeah. in that case, the 10 frames really helped me count the 10, right? Because I, yes. I, if they had a 10 frame with, it wasn't a 10 frame, let's say it was an eight frame, yeah. I would probably not count and say 10. Yes, that's right. And that's right. So you don't trick kids with that. You don't put up eight frames really because yeah. you're building, you're building up on what they learned in kindergarten and we're learning, continue to learn in first grade is that we have kids organize their tens into sets of 10 through a tens frame because it gets them thinking in the rhythm of 10. And since we have a base 10 system, that's really important. So that's right. just and I, and I was going to say, like a lot of caregivers have probably seen st their students working on t working, yeah. doing some work with 10 frames. And this is exactly why, right? The power yes. of the 10 frame in terms of working on the quantity. And yes, and kids come home and say that they've been subitizing. And this is, this is what it means. And I yeah. think it's important for, for parents and teachers to understand that you don't subitize for the sake of subitizing. You subitize because it connects to the curriculum. It builds the power and the brain of, of thinking in, in sets. Um, and I'll show you one more thing. That's I, I, sets 10. 20. I, I just wanted to say, Valerie, that is yeah. so important to understand that the ultimate goal is not, I mean, of course, it's good if you become a better and better subitizer, but right, uh, what right, we're right, trying right. to build is your understanding of numbers, composition, decomposition, place 10 value, um, yeah, base 10 um, system, place value. So that that's where we were doing. The other thing I was thinking is, which is cool, is uh, 10 frames is so easy to make at home. You just need mm -hmm. a piece of paper and you draw it, and then you can start playing with that really easy. Yes, and we can put on our website too. I've got some I'm building a library of supertizing videos and supertizing PowerPoints that can be used. And we can put that article up there. Uh, but yeah, tens frames are really foundational. Just have a couple more slides just to tell you kind of uh, where we go with this. There's 10 and 5, 15. Now all of a sudden, because you're organized, you can see 15 like this. Okay. So why is it so critical? We just discussed that. By the way, that other set of dots was 14. Um, but when I organize my dots like this, you can see it right away. And then we move into the associative property, again, connecting to mathematics. And we teach kids that the way you want to add nine and four is not, not necessarily nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, because that doesn't scale up so well. You want them to think about, oh, nine. Well, I know I can make a set of 10 and the three left over makes 13. So you have kids decompose that add end and, and move it into the tens frame so that they can think about completing a set of 10. So here I have eight and four, complete a set of 10 and two left over. And so that really helps with adding uh, larger numbers. Um, Valerie, um, we talk a lot about this kind of strategy when we get to addition. Mm -hmm. But honestly, I had not thought of it in the context of subitizing and it provides a lot of meaning for that strategy when yeah. you see it in this context, because, yeah. oh yeah, you know, I can think in my mind, I can move those two, complete that and still read the other two that are left alone. So yeah, I like this. Yeah, this it, it provides that concrete support underneath uh, those symbols. So yeah, and I was gonna go ahead. say, um, like I'm thinking about caregivers who may have had experiences like I had when I was a child where I was like, think about the power of this for learning. Think about your addition facts, right? I was just told I just had to learn them. Nine plus four is 13 at the symbolic level, just seeing the numerals rather than seeing the quantities represented by these dots, right? And so I just, I mean, the power of that and just understanding or memorizing, I, I don't even know if I wanna use the word memorizing, right? Um, but you want to have a relative efficiency with those facts 
but this is going to support that efficiency versus right. what I had to do would just, you know, memorize them without really understanding what was happening. So. Um, the other thing I was thinking that um, it would be interesting to talk a little is I think a lot of people would say, well, you have to be able to count first before you can add and subtract. But here it shows a much more interactive way in which addition is supporting your understanding of number and counting in a way and cardinality. So there is a, um, I think it's important to think, do I have to wait until my kids know how to add to do this or right. know how to, how, how far do they have to count to be able to do this? But I, I think this provides a much more um, integrated way of thinking about it because yeah. you can start doing addition when they are really counting only up to three or four. They, exactly. They're not quite at seven, but they start three, three and four, and now I can count seven. So a lot of integration there. That's very cool. Yes. Yeah, no, it's, it, I appreciate that thought. And then we can go all the way up into division. So bam, how much was that? And, so, and multiplication. Yeah. I mean, it's like a miracle. Eight that times you know five. how much that is. Eight groups of five. Mm -hmm. Eight groups of five. You can also see it as two groups of 20. You could see it as four groups of 10. Mm -hmm. um, so it helps with all different types of properties and, and supports kids. And it's a misnomer that you memorize your facts with one cognitive synapse, right? Right. So usually we wire a couple of synapses together. So if a student can use those visual memories from subitizing to kind of... Uh, efficiently find those values, um, that's, that's how it works, a couple synapses. So this idea, like Temple was saying about our teacher saying, just don't think about anything, just what's nine plus four is really a misunderstanding of how the brain develops um, uh, flexibility and, and, fact, and fact knowledge. I love this for thinking about learning about basic, basic multiplication facts. That is a challenge for so many kids. Yeah. And this provides a whole other way, which has got this visual component to mm -hmm. that can help some other kids that will see it this way quite easily. Um, I love that. So what do we want to say for caregivers and suggestions of things to do at home? Temple, you got anything? What would you say? Um, well, I'm thinking about what we could provide the caregivers to support, to support them. I mean, if I, if, as a caregiver, I would suggest that um, to do some subitizing, especially right now, right, when your child's at home. It's a very quick thing to do. You could do five minutes of subitizing. I mean, there is, I mean, so we, Valerie, you mentioned some of your materials that maybe we can put online um, as, a, as a support, you know. Um, also, I will tell you there is a I would recommend my children use it. Um, this, there's an app called Subitized Tree, and they actually love it. Um, and the Subitized Tree is a Subit. I mean, it's so that's an option too. So. Oh, that's great! I'll have to look into that one too. Yeah, I was gonna add. You know, I think the the res the ideas provided here um, span the. A, a large ra range of grades, right? You could go up with kids in fifth grade and be working in lots of subitizing ideas connected to multiplication, division. So I think thinking about where your child, what is your child working on? And then how can subitizing support that is probably an important way. And you might have to start, I don't know, you know, start with some practice if they've never really done so some surprising and it's fun i know because i too have done it with my kids when they were little and then build up to whatever your child is working on and try to think of ways of seeing those numbers that can support them yeah i want to reiterate that as in our um as we wrap up here um that start at the lowest level for every kid You've got a 10 year old or a 12 year old, just start with one, two, three, that's fine. And just see exactly, because what it allows you to do is see if there is a gap that maybe you didn't realize was there. And I've talked to, I had a fifth grade teacher come up to me a year or so ago after she'd been subitizing for a while. And she said it made such a huge difference with her fifth graders. She didn't realize that they weren't subitizing small numbers. So then she was able to build that up and then their math facts got so much better. 
So they were able to not only do say nine plus three is 12 by thinking, okay, boom, put one over there, 10 and two is 12. But also then they could think 19 plus three is 22 because they, they're starting to understand how to move numbers around in their head. Uh, and they don't see 19 and three as only a number line, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So it, it, it is powerful. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. That's subitizing <laughs> in a nutshell. I love it. Actually, I have to say, I was sitting here um, excited, hope, waiting for you to give me the next one to see if I would figure out. <laughs> you can still do it. <laughs> yeah, if it oh, she's going to challenge me and I'm going to not be able to do it. I love it. It tickles a part of the brain that doesn't always get tickled. And they just, they, the temple can attest to this too. And it sounds like you can too, uh, Pala. Kids love it. Oh, kids love it. Yeah. And, you know, I didn't really use it with my kids all the way to what you were talking about, because I don't know that we were thinking that way right. back then. Right. You know, we were talking about subitizing as introduction to numbers, as small numbers. Right. But, for example, I can see that it would have helped Clara, who is more of a visual kid. Uh, oh, my God, that would have made a total difference in her life. I, I am convinced right now that it would. Well, yeah. Yeah. Let us know. Yeah. yeah, let us know if you have any questions. We'd be happy to support you.